we have the right to sue them. Now here's something really great if you've been studying 1215.org, that we, the sovereign, can change our mind. It's kind of almost like a wife. <laughs> I'm not saying that in a bad way. How many men have ever got mad at their wife because they changed their mind? Maybe when you first got married, but after a while you don't get mad. It's just part of the deal. I'm going to wear this. And then they come back out and they got on something and go, did you change? Yeah, I didn't feel comfortable with that. Well, that's how we are as a sovereign, okay? We can agree to a driver's license, and then we can say, you know what? I don't want the driver's license anymore. That's what sovereign is all about. There's a great uh, case with the Indian tribe being sovereign, changing their mind. And the corporation sued them, and the, and, and the Supreme Court said, sorry, they're sovereign. They can change their mind. So there's some more hope for us about, about changing our mind. Oh, 1215.org, okay. This guy right here has got a great website. If you go to 1215.org, 1215 stands for the uh, Magna Carta. That's when it was signed, okay? Um, that was one of the first um, documents that uh, was signed to help the slaves get out of bondage, basically. It wasn't a great document because they, they hid a lot of the truth in that. That sets the basics for the first rule of our standard for review, know the parties. What we have presented is sufficient to show that the basics of who the parties are and related to resolving the answer. We admonish everyone to prove the facts or, or search themselves. The second rule down here in that last paragraph, the rule from our, our standard review is when you understand the environmental nature of the relationship. With that in mind, let's consider the events of the time. The Civil War had recently ended, and the country was still under Lincoln's Conscription Act. We call that a martial law now. Okay, so under martial law, president can write anything, and it's considered as law. Okay? Now, once we come out of martial law, all those laws are abated. That means they're no longer in effect. Okay? So, if you notice, every president since then has declared war on something. <laughs> declared war on drugs. We've declared war on poverty. We've declared, they've, they've all declared war on something to keep us into a state of war. So that the president has ultimate power in our country. Okay? Uh, Congress had at least three problems they could see no way to directly cure by following the laws of the land. They were out of funds. They had uh, promised 40 acres of land to each slave that left the South to fight for the North, and they had to reintegrate uh, the South into the Union, which they could not do without controlling the appointment of the Southern states' congressional me uh, members. There were other problems, but these three stand out from all the rest. That is enough about the environment for the purposes of this review. However, the more you study the historical events of this time, uh, the more obvious the relationships become. You will become a more proof, uh, I'm sorry, it'll become, and the more proof you will have to amass to prove the facts, what, what actually happened. In the interest of time and space, in this response, we'll move on. Okay, the next one up. Knowing the government of District of Columbia was already created into the government, and so formed into a municipal incorporation in 1801, under the District of Columbia Acts, we wonder, even with Congress's con constitutional authority to pass any law within the 10 square mile of the district, how do you create or incorporate for the first time a municipal government that has already been in existence as a municipal corporation for 70 years? And the answer is, it's impossible. So what Congress did is they committed fraud. It's illegal. Okay. Now, the cool part is, is the District of Columbia only has authority over the District of Columbia, okay? And its jurisdictions. How do they get jurisdiction? By consent. Only by our consent. So they call things, instead of the Arizona State, they change the, the terminology to the State of Arizona. It's kind of like being in a state of euphoria. Are we in a euphoria now? We're not in the State of Arizona either, okay? We're on the Arizona Republic, or we're on the Arizona State, whatever you want to say, but we're on. Whenever you're in something, you're under the dirt. You're dead. You're a corporation. So I'm saying all these things to you because when you go to court and the judge asks you, where do you live, and you use the word in, you're done. I'm telling you. He's looking for contracts. He's looking for something that you signed. Do you have a driver's license? You say yes, you're done. 
He's looking for three contracts of three specific pieces of information to, to trap you into his jurisdiction, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you this. People call and they say, what is the Republic doing? Well, the Republic, for one thing, we're, we're educating as fast as... If I'm in a, in, a, in a bank line trying to cash a check, and somebody says, boy, is this economy crooked? I go, we're standing in the biggest bank robbers of all time, right here. He goes, where? I go, right here. They're on the other side. <laughs> They're robbing us every time we get here. And I talk about it all the time because... You never know who you're going to run into that is looking for what we're doing. And i got to tell you right now, the season is perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is perfect right now. I don't have anybody say, oh, yeah, that George Bush, he was great. Or that Jimmy Carter, boy, what a great guy. Everybody's just sick of everything. You know what I mean? The lights are turning on. So <clears throat> I'm going to get into the three contracts with you real quick so you understand some of that stuff. Um, when you consider the historical facts, the only meaning left for the terms given in the opening paragraph of the District of Columbia Organ, uh, Organic Act of 1871, and that which follows, is that it, it's a municipal corporation that was created, is, uh, I'm sorry, that was created is a private corporation owned by the actual government. And it's saying the government, but it's not saying our government. So what government owns it? The only government created in that act was the same government any private corporation has within operation of its own corporate constru construct. Thus we call it a corporation U.S. Now with any corporation, there's investors, okay, there's a board of directors, there's a secretary, and there's a treasury. Now the good part is, that all sounds, when I first started hearing this stuff, it was very depressing because I thought, man, we're locked in. The good news is we're sovereign. We can change our mind. You can go back and nullify contracts. You can... If, let me explain one, one quick thing about contracts, okay? How do you cancel a contract? Go ahead. Bankruptcy. <laughs> when you're a dead person, that's the, about the only way you can. But if you're in honor and there's a contract, I have an agreement with him to take out his trash every Saturday, okay? And I sign it or I don't sign it. It doesn't matter. There's a trust there that I'm going to take out his trash every Saturday for him. After about 10 years of it, I go, golly, I can't even leave on the weekends. <laughs> so I say, okay. I'm going to amend our agreement. That's what amendments are for. So I let him know, hey, Brad, for 10 years I've taken out the trash for you, and I, I need to leave on the weekend. So what I want to do is I want to amend our agreement. I want you to take out your own trash for the next 10 years, and if you have a problem with that, you have to let me know in 21 days. If you don't respond, I'm going to accept your response as no response as agreement. And if you get mad at me, okay, and you cuss at me because you didn't respond properly, it's a dollar per cussing. <laughs> and this is a self-executing contract. So if you say you don't get it, too bad, I know you got it because I'm going to have Bob Jones, the next door neighbor, hand deliver it to you and he's going to testify that you got it. And by the way, I want you to respond to Bob Jones, the next door neighbor, because if he says you didn't respond, this contract is in full effect. That's how you amend or you cancel a contract. So if we're in honor, there's no fighting. We accept all the terms of the conditions right up to the point where we amend the contract. Is it possible to amend the District of Columbia's contracts? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Now, if I wanted to pull a, tr a tricky one to Brad in the contract, okay, I could say... By the way, I'm going to go ahead and give you $50,000 to let me out of this contract, but I put it in square brackets. I'm going to give you $50,000 to let me out of the contract, and I put it in square brackets. Now, there's some guys here that understand contract law. What do the square brackets mean to that contract of that statement? It means that's not a part of the contract. Not there. That's not there. Okay. It's not there. So he could say, hey, you said you're going to give me $50,000. Where is it? I go, that's not part of the contract. <laughs> gotcha. Now, if he doesn't understand that, it's buyer beware. Too bad for you. Can you pull up the, um, the, the Constitution? When I started listening to Winston Shroud, I, I did not understand it. But I knew that people in life were where they got to be was from listening to Winston Shroud. I forced myself to watch him. It was like eating broccoli 
that had been dipped in horse manure. I mean, it was hard, okay? It was extremely hard. I could not fathom what he was talking about. And he would go so fast, and he seemed like a nice guy. He's got white hair. He said he was a framer. I mean, he said he had a couple of jobs, and the guys that I was beginning to run around with kept saying, you need to watch Winston Shroud. Choked him down, night after night. Sometimes I'd watch the same 15-minute segment of the video a hundred times, and so I could understand a little bit. At least I could recite it. was kind of like learning a song, you know? You sing it over a hundred times, you can, you can say it, even if you don't know what you're saying. You can understand it. And he said... Square brackets. A lot of the stuff in the uh, Constitution doesn't pertain to us, doesn't pertain to citizens. Now that's, I knew this because I was a Chief Justice for a little while, and I knew that the Supreme Court had ruled that when people come in and say, I demand my constitutional rights, they, the judge says, sit down and shut up. If you say that again, I'm going to throw you in jail. Mm -hmm. And what the reason why is because the Supreme Court ruled that the Constitution, that the citizens are not a party to it. How could that be? It talks about the 14th Amendment and the slaves. They're a part of it. We're all a part of it. That's our Constitution to keep the government below us. Well, let me show you what I found. Article 1. You see how that's written? In the original Constitution, that's how it's written. Let's slide up about, um, let's go to the 13th or 14th Amendment. It talks about the people a lot. Now, this is just um, an observation that I made. There's three, four, oh, back. Has anybody seen any square boxes? The rights of the citizens of the United States. That isn't a part of the contract. It's on there. But citizens don't have rights. It's like jumbo shrimp. Has anybody seen a shrimp this big? There are no jumbo shrimp. There's a little bit bigger ones than the bigger ones, but they're all shrimps. Okay, they're all small. That, that article right there, 2026, 20, is not part of the Constitution. Now, if you look at the Constitution of the United States, because there's two of them, the opposite brackets are on those ones. Okay? So, if you're a citizen, you've got to read the second one. And if you're a sovereign, you need to read the first one. That's all there is to it. Now, I've got one more quick thing to tell you. What? Could you explain the four corners? The four corners rule? Yeah. Just a quick thing to have some fun the next time you get a ticket. If a highway patrolman pulls you over, be real nice. Hand him your license and tell him that's your, your corporation license. Okay, that's my corporate traveling pass. <laughs> have some fun with it, okay? Be nice to the guy. But when you sign your name in the ticket, put a square box around the signature area and make sure it's all locked in. So that it's, and then sign in that box and hand it back to them. Okay? Right. If you guys know what A for V is, go ahead and get that on there too. All right. Now, when you hand that to them, if it gets back to the court, there's no signature on it. Okay. You guys, if you know how to defend that, it's a lot of fun. Okay. I'm just telling you that's one way to do it. But 